Hi everybody, it's Erica Nygaard at University of Louisville, and today we're going to be talking all about early childhood. Today's topic is educating with intentionality. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to reflect on our teaching process and how to set goals and accomplish them. We're going to learn how to create an environment that fosters mindfulness. We're going to consider our own dispositions, attitudes, and beliefs, and how those impact the classroom. We're going to look at professional development strategies that encourage self-reflection, goal setting, journaling, discussion groups with peers, analyzing video footage of our teaching practice, and being observed in the classroom. And we'll discuss early childhood ethics as outlined by the National Association for the Education of Young Children. What does it mean to be an intentional educator? Intentional educators are continuously evaluating their approach to the classroom. They reflect on their teaching process. They observe other teachers in the field. They ask questions and form hypotheses. They know who they are and how their background and values influence their response in the classroom. They find the details of children's competency that engage their heart and mind. They notice children as they play and as they learn. They find value in these experiences. They seek the child's point of view. They find out what the child is drawn to and excited about. They observe to discover what the child is trying to accomplish. They examine the environment physically, socially, and emotionally. They are aware of how their physical setup and materials impact their classroom. They thoughtfully prepare their schedules and routines and make time to strengthen relationships. They consider multiple perspectives. They consider the child's background and culture and how that may influence their ability to learn. They consider child development and early learning theories. They consider opportunities and possibilities for next steps. They set learning goals and build on the children's experiences. All intentional teachers make time for self-reflection. By analyzing your own teaching approach, you become aware of both the positive qualities you bring to the classroom and any areas that you need to work on. When you reflect, you become more aware of who you are as an educator. Your values, your beliefs, your teaching philosophy, your teaching and learning styles, your role in the classroom, your understanding of children, behavior, inclusion, diversity, and more. According to the Council for Professional Recognition, reflective early educators are better able to slow down and take a better look at how they teach, discover patterns in children's behavior, see how they translate theory into practice, determine whether they act with professionalism, recognize and change behaviors that are not consistent with their standards of effective teaching, determine whether their teaching addresses the learning standards, uncover issues that impact the children's learning, and use multiple sources of information to inform their teaching practice. There are so many ways that you can be a reflective early educator. You can journal or create a group with fellow teachers who want to grow professionally together. You could meet weekly or monthly or even quarterly. Talk about what's going well in your classroom. Ask for advice, share ideas with each other, or simply encourage one another. You can take videos of yourself teaching in the classroom. Watch it back by yourself or get some popcorn and invite a friend. <laughs> you could ask to be observed by a colleague or even ask to be evaluated by your director. Work with a mentor or even a coach who can help you become a better teacher. Focus on your reflections. Set clear, manageable goals. Avoid abstract goals like, I want to become a better teacher, and instead focus on a specific goal. For example, I'm going to journal 20 minutes every single day after school. According to Deb Curtis and Margie Carter, intentional teachers have certain qualities. These qualities distinguish them from teachers who depend on curriculum books. 
who follow the same theme plans year after year after year, who struggle daily to get the children involved in anything productive. The knowledge and skills of these master teachers aren't necessarily different from those of other teachers. Rather, these professionals have become improvisational artists. They have developed a set of attitudes and habits of mind that enable them to respond readily to the classroom dynamics and the multiple needs of their children. Schiller recommends the following three steps for becoming a more intentional early educator. First, familiarize yourself with child development. Research knowledge to understand which outcomes are most suitable for your children. Be knowledgeable and observant. Understand how children of different ages, dispositions, and interests learn best and the accommodations you need to make to foster their learning. Second, select targeted desired outcomes for your children while planning. Intentional early educators must be exceptional planners. They configure the environment, choose materials, and question the children in ways that promote learning. And third, intentional educators learn from the children they teach. They understand that teaching involves following and leading. This sometimes means letting the children decide in what they will engage in and learn. Intentional early educators allow their children's interests to guide them throughout the year. In early childhood education, we refer to this as emergent curriculum. This is a philosophy of teaching that follows the interests of children. It creates meaningful learning experiences that are child-centered. It is initiated by the child and supported through inquiry and play. Intentional early educators are mindful about their teaching approach, and they teach mindfulness to their children. According to John Kabat-Zinn, mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. Mindfulness requires us to tune in to the sensory information all around us. By practicing mindfulness with our children, we are reinforcing increased attention, self-regulation, social well-being, calmness, and gratitude. We are paving neural pathways. We are connecting the right and left sides of the brain to create between organization in our thinking skills and in our movement patterns. We start with breathing exercises to clear and calm the mind. The best breathing is that which engages the diaphragm. When I was teaching, we called this big belly breathing. <laughs> this can be hard for children to do while they're standing up, so invite them to lay down on their backs as they breathe. Have them place a small stuffed animal just below the rib cage. With each full and complete inhale, the animal will rise on their belly. And with each exhale, it will fall back to the resting position. Ring a bell and ask children to listen carefully to the vibration of the ringing sound. Tell them to remain silent and to raise their hand when they can no longer hear the bell ringing. Tune in to the five senses by asking them what they see, hear, smell, touch, or taste at any given moment. By asking them to pause and perceive, we're pulling them back into the present and encouraging them to be mindful of their environment. Create a mystery bag and fill it with little toys and trinkets, acorns or leaves, toy blocks or little toy cars. Have them close their eyes and reach in and identify the object only by touch. If they can't identify the object, ask them questions that help them tune in, like, is it hard or is it soft? As children breathe, instruct them to breathe in through their nose and reach high up to the sky. As they exhale, have them breathe out of their mouth and fold over and reach toward the floor. After strenuous outdoor play, have children reach their hands over their heart and try to feel their heartbeat. Have them close their eyes and see if they can tune in. Have them focus on their breathing and ask questions like, is it beating fast or slow? Progressive muscular relaxation is a technique that involves 
tensing specific muscle groups and then relaxing them to promote total body relaxation and improve mindfulness. This exercise starts at your head and works all the way down to your toes until your whole body is at a relaxed state of mind. Even blowing bubbles can promote mindfulness. Have your little ones focus on the bubbles as they float up, up, and away! By being intentional in our approach to the classroom, we become better teachers, not only for ourselves, but for all of the little ones who look up to us every single day.